So I suffer from the same problem that I think a lot of you guys also do as well as we get at the end or middle of our picks and sight stuff where we've got this beautiful starless image and this star image and we put them together and we kind of wish we could bring out details and everything. And at that point, we're kind of like frozen. Or if you have Photoshop, some people go to Photoshop, but a lot of people don't want to pay the money for Photoshop. They don't want to learn another program and everything else like that. Now there is another solution and that is Affinity Photo 2. It is $35, a one-time fee. That's all you got to worry about. None of this monthly charging or anything. And even down to the key commands, it's like 95% the same as Photoshop. By the way, my name is Chad. This is the Easy Astro Images channel. When we're taking a look at Affinity Photo, there's a couple of people that have inspired me on this. First of all, Sky Story, because he uses Affinity Photo and he's getting ready to do a very long in-depth series to show you how to do even more with it, even though, again, a lot of it is very, very similar to Photoshop. And also Craig at Utah Desert Astron Remote Observatory. Now he uses Photoshop, but like I said, every key command and almost everything that Craig does, you can do in Affinity Photo. So there's hours worth of content out here that is very easy to understand as well. Now I did a video a couple days ago about Cyril and a whole end-to-end -end process that involved Affinity Photo. Most people don't watch the videos to the end, so they're not going to see that. So that's why we're releasing this piece. And you'll see me just kind of like fumble through. And I'm not that far ahead of you guys. I've got like 8 to 12 hours of maybe Photoshop, Affinity Photo, like actual real time. I've watched a lot of content on it. And I can get, you know, through what I need to do. So I think this video is going to show you easy things to do, like bringing in your stars, blending them back in, how to set up different level adjustments, all that kind of stuff, how to tweak your background image, all that just basic stuff. I think you're going to love it. So if you really like what we're doing here at the channel, you can always become a PayPal member. And if you really believe in what we're doing, you can also send me a coffee or something with the paypal.me link below. So enjoy the video. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions or anything else, Appreciate you guys. Peace. We're in Affinity Photo, the savior to the people who do not want to get Photoshop and made famous definitely recently by the Sky Story YouTube channel. Go ahead and click on File, Open. We are going to open the After Starless Graxpert image. Done. Now, let's go in, Open. We are going to open the Star Mask, which is our stars. We're going to drag that baby down here. What we need to do, make sure all of your snapping tools are turned on up here. So that way we can properly align this stuff. Grab the little thing right here, the little arrow and not the hand. And you can move this baby around and you're eventually going to get it to line up. I'm still having a little bit of difficulty with my staff snapping tool for some reason. Hopefully one of these days I will figure that out. So I found it a lot easier to just kind of zoom in. And what we're looking for is the green lines for the image for it to all snap into place right there. Just like that. That took way longer than it should. So let's go ahead and center this baby back up. Now, right now the stars is above everything. If we turn off the stars, we can see that we've got our image underneath there. What we want to do is highlight the stars and go ahead and click screen. And if you're happy with the way that this looks right now, then you can go on to the next step that we'll go over, export your image and good, you're good. But I will tell you that we can do things to these stars to control the brightness and everything else that's going on with them and make them blend in perfectly. So let's just go ahead and turn them off real quick select our background here. I want to duplicate the background and just, we just want to always do that and keep it locked just so that way, if we make a ton of mistakes, we can always come back to that. So we've got that background layer selected. We are going to enter their version of camera roll, which is called the De develop persona. And we just click on that. This is how you save and exit the persona. And over here is all of our fun stuff. So we've got basic details, tones, and we've got the history. So if we go into basic immediately, we can just start changing the exposure on the image. 
So we can brighten everything up a little bit. We can lower the, raise the black point. That looks good right there. We can add a little bit of contrast to it if we want, if we want to take it down even further. So we'll go ahead and do that. We can also see that the color space is a little bit different in here. So I'm starting to see, obviously, that our colors in the nebula look a lot different and the background looks a little bit different. We can take care of that. We can zoom in and we can basically see if we want to add any kind of clarity or sharpness to this stuff. So I think what we can do is we, you know, if we go all the way up, it's going to totally crunch everything out, but we can add a pretty decent amount here and the image is not going to get like really super noisy on us or fall apart. I really like the way that this works. We're just going to leave it like around 20%. So that way, you know, we're all pretty much on the same page. And then we can also open up our saturation and vibrance. We can add a little bit more saturation to it if we want to. We can just kick that up maybe to like four or 5%. And vibrance, which will work on our midtones. You know, we can see that we can adjust that as well. I mean, you can't have enough saturation or enough of vibrance. So let's go ahead and zoom back out. And that's kind of what our image is looking like right now. You can see we've got some brighter, hotter spots. Maybe we need to bring some of that back down a little bit. We've got our white balance tab. And like I said, we saw that we've got like a little bit of a blue kind of cast to it. So what we can do is we can move this slider over here and that's gonna kind of, you know, turn it a little bit more to the green. The other thing we can do is we'll make a global adjustment at the end, and that will allow us to take out a little bit of that blue. So you've got shadows and highlights down here as well that you can play around with. I don't wanna make this really crazy and get lost in all of the fun. So right here, we've got details that we can work on. We've already kind of enhanced the details. We've got noise reduction. Uh, the noise reduction, you can zoom in here. And if you wanna try to clean some of that up, you can. So you can see that it's gonna totally blur everything out. And we want a fine line here of just doing a little bit of noise reduction and not losing all that detail that we gained back. So maybe we'll just put it like at 10%. And then you also have color noise re reduction. I don't see, you know, much color noise going on out in here. So I don't think that we need to do anything with that at all. And then we can go to our tones and we can, you know, start working on curves if we want to. So if you didn't want to do anything with the crazy details and you want to try to get rid of a little bit of that blue bias, you can go ahead and select just the blue channel and we can just pull that back just a little bit. And you wanna be real careful and slight movements because you're gonna to go to the green real quick. So just a tad, you can try dropping it down here, but again, it's just gonna to get to the green real fast. So we're just gonna leave that little bit right there and that'll be good. So it took a little bit of that blue cast away and we don't wanna kill all of it because we've got star color behind there. So definitely keep that in mind. Now here is your black and white where you can start working on all the different tones, the split toning. Definitely not gonna get into that in this video. And then here is your history. So this shows you everything that you did inside of the develop persona. So I think we're done in there. I'm good with that. We're gonna click on develop and it's basically gonna save all those changes and it's gonna kick us back out to where our stars are. So we can rescreen our stars there's our stars. That could be our finished image right there, but we're gonna do extra credit and take things a little bit longer. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the star mask layer right here. And what I wanna do is turn this into a group. So I'm gonna hit highlight the layer. I'm gonna press control and G. And what I wanna do is double click on that and we're gonna rename this stars just so we know what's going on. Then we're gonna come down to the background layer and we're gonna do the same thing. Control G, we'll go ahead and click on that and we'll call this Starless. And then what we can do is we can add individual adjustments to each layer. So if we go up to stars and we turn our stars back on, we wanna make sure that everything is still in the screen mode. It kinda of likes to change on you, not sure why. So the first thing we'll do is we're gonna 
highlight the star mask right here, that layer. We're going to click on the little yin yang down here. And then what we'll do is we'll actually add a curves adjustment and we can close that out and we can always come back to it. So what the curves adjustment is going to do is it's going to allow us to play with those stars. So we could go ahead and pull down on the curve here and we can go ahead and blend those stars in as much as we want. You can see how real easy and gentle and pretty that looks. So we can get rid of them all together. We can push them up if we want to, whatever. I'm just going to pull them back a little bit and we'll call that good. If we zoom in and we look at our stars and if we don't like the colors that we're getting out of them, uh, what we can do is we can add some actual more color to it. So let's click on that again. And we can do this a couple different ways. We can do it through curves. We can do it through levels, vibrance, whatever. So let's go ahead and just click on vibrance to kind of make it easy. So let's just uh, start playing around with this. We'll zoom in a little bit more on our stars here and we can see what happens if we turn up the bright, the vibrance all the way, not much. You can see what happens if we go down here, not a whole lot working with this on vibrance, on saturation. Oh yeah, we can really get some more saturation in there. So I'm gonna just turn my saturation up to say 20%. Cause I like my shot, my stars to be nice and saturated. And then maybe looking at the stars at zooming way in here, maybe they're still just a little bit too oblong for me. So I can go into the curves adjustment. And if we want to, we can just make them a little bit less noticeable. But again, you know, you're going to kill all your brightness and you might be taking it away from your overall image, but it's simple and easy to do. And let's go ahead and zoom back out. And I think the image still looks really good to me. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now, if we want to, we can go ahead and say, that's good. That's all we want to do to our stars. Let's go ahead and just minimize that group. Let's open up the starless group. We can do the exact same thing in here. We've already went through the develop persona, but if you want to, you can do some of that stuff in here as well. So we can go ahead and we can add in another curves adjustment into here. And if you wanna adjust that outside of here, and if you wanna maybe blend this in a little bit more with your stars while they're there, so we can kind of work on this as well. And see, we're not affecting the stars. We're just working on that background layer. And if the stars get in your way, you can always go up here and click the little button and turn them off. And you can just kind of start messing around on everything. Get a reset button right there. So turn our stars back on. I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. Now, if you want to do like global adjustments, you can do those too. So all you have to do is just not have any layers selected, come down here and we can do a levels and we want to close that. And we want to make sure and drag it all the way up here above the stars. And now when we do this level of adjustment, it's going to basically apply everything to the entire image. So we can brighten up the entire image along with the stars and nebula and everything else. Sometimes in the end, this is gonna be your savior that you might wanna do. For example, I was kind of like freaking out. I didn't really, I thought it had too much blue in it. So again, we can try doing this here with levels by getting rid of the blue and we can raise that black point up on the blue. But again, it's gonna go to green real quick. So there's not a lot of wiggle room maybe just a couple percent. Yep, that looks good to me. So that's pretty much the image right there, guys. At this point, you can see what you got. If you're very, very happy with it, you can just go up to file and you can go to save as. And then of course, right here, you can save it as anything you want. You can save it as a TIFF file. You, you can save it as a JPEG. So that way you can share it to Facebook, all that kind of stuff. And that's it.